Welcome everyone, I am Venkates uh, from Indian Institute of Science. I will be teaching you the course on introduction to Lie algebras. So, in this course uh, we will mainly focus on finite dimensional uh, Lie algebras. In this very first lecture I will be actually defining uh, the main objects of the course and then we will see some properties of them and then I will end with uh, various examples uh, that will be uh, that will be discussed throughout the course. Okay. So, uh, we will always work with uh, work over complex numbers. So, let us say C denotes the set of all complex numbers. So, we always assume all the vector spaces that are going to be appear in this course are all finite dimensional over this complex numbers unless otherwise specified. Okay. So, all the vector spaces are assumed to be finite dimensional vector spaces over the complex number C. Okay. So, we also use, uh, we will fix some notations uh, okay, in order to actually use them. So, let us denote eject by the set of integers. and z plus the set of non negative integers and n by the set of natural numbers. Okay, so, here are some basic definitions. The very first definition is the product or called multiplication. Okay. So, let us start with a vector space. Let V be a vector space over complex numbers. So, your multiplication or a product is a bilinear map from V cross V to V. So, given two elements x and y in V, so we will have some image inside V. So, it is linear in first coordinate and second coordinate. So, that is called a multiplication or a product. So, once uh, we have this multiplication, okay, so we will be able to actually uh, define what is called uh, algebra. So, those are all very important uh, objects in abstract algebras. Okay. So, so let us recall the definition of associative algebra. So, an associative algebra capital A defined over C is a ring, let us say capital A plus a dot. Okay. So, this is uh, the addition plus and this is the multiplication. So, now, so this is a ring. So, we uh, do not any assume anything about uh, the commutativity of the ring. Okay. So, it is just a ring. So, we always assume uh, this ring has this uh, multiplicative identity 1, which we denoted by 1a. So, this is the multiplicative identity a 
since we are talking about associative algebra we assume this multiplication satisfies associative law so what is the meaning of that if we take three elements from the from capital a then we must have x composition y composition is it is same as x y times z okay so this is the assumption on the ring structure okay so now it is called algebra it is also a vector space and this vector space uh, structure and the ring structure should have some compatibility condition okay let's see what it is so a is also a vector space so this is like first condition the second condition so a with the, the same addition that you have already in the ring structure the same addition with respect to that and some scalar multiplication which we denoted by dot forms a vector space over this complex numbers okay so what are all the compatibility conditions so the first condition okay let me call it 1 the ring addition and the vector space addition they must coincide the ring addition and the vector space addition they must coincide in other words so these two uh, additive groups a plus that appear in, in the ring and uh, a plus that appear in this vector space they are all same and the second condition so this ring structure and the vector space structure uh, should be some somewhat they should interact with each other so so the the following condition must be satisfied with respect to the scalar multiplication and the ring multiplication okay so the scalar multiplication we denoted by dot and uh, the ring multiplication we denoted by circle so with respect to that we have this following uh, condition so alpha dot x circle y is should be same as alpha dot x circle y and then x circle alpha dot y so this should be true for all scalars alpha from c and these vectors x1 xy from capital okay so if you have a ring with additional structure vector space structure satisfying this condition that will be called an associative algebra a over c okay so by our assumption we assume always this associative algebra contains the multiplicative identity one okay that is our basic assumption so this one a always is there so now we will actually give a very practical example of this associative algebra okay so somewhat uh, that motivates us to develop our theory okay so here is the very practical example so you choose n from uh, capital n okay so let n be an natural number so then consider this set of all n by n matrices over complex numbers so which will be denoted by mn of c so what is this so this is set of all matrices so maybe i will use a small letter small a a i j so this is n by n matrix a j are all coming from c for all i j coming from between 1 to n so this uh, set of all n by n matrices over this complex numbers they have natural matrix addition okay so the addition you take it to be the matrix addition 
and the multiplication you take it to be the matrix multiplication and the scalar multiplication you take it to be the scalar multiplication of matrices okay the scalar multiplication that you already know so with respect to this operation m n of c forms an associative algebra over c of course the identity matrix so identity matrix is the multiplicative identity okay this is a very important uh, associative algebra so this is also finite dimensional algebra okay we know many things about this algebra so for example the dimension of this algebra is actually n square okay so the dimension over c of this m1 of c is actually n square and we also have this very nice basis uh, given by this uh, elementary matrices okay which we denoted by eij so what is eij so eij is the matrix that has entry 1 uh, at ijth position or all other entries will be zero okay so this is a matrix where okay i'm using get the same notation let's say this is ars where how this ars given ars equal to 1 if rs is same as ij otherwise it's zero okay and it is a simple exercise to see that this eij when it varies over 1 to n form a basis for this m n of c okay so here uh, like when we take uh, n equal to 2 we can write down explicitly what are all the basis uh, for example you can see that 1 0 0 0 and then 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 so there are four elements okay in uh, each position okay so this will form a basis for m2 of c okay so now we are almost uh, ready to define the main objects of our interest called lie algebras okay so lie algebras they are again algebras but in very uh, general sense so so let, we will see like what does it mean and they are actually highly non commutative non associative algebras so they are not like uh, these associative algebras okay uh, associative algebras can be highly non commutative for example mn of c it is easy to prove when uh, n is greater than or equal to 2 mn of c is always non commutative but uh, these uh, objects lie algebras they are also non associative so they are much more hard harder to deal with okay but uh, let's first see an example to motivate so where they actually come from okay so like i said it in the introduction they indeed come from uh, the theory of lie groups okay to understand uh, lie groups so you take this linear approximation which are called lie algebras and then from algebraic structure of this lie algebra somehow you can understand the structure of lie groups okay this is the theory of lie, lie groups but anyway uh, in this course we will not actually get to see lie groups okay we will be only focusing on the lie algebras and the algebraic side okay so mostly we will deal with deal with uh, algebraic ideas in this course so because of that i would like to actually uh, uh, tell you uh, from the algebraic point of view why this lie algebras are motivated 
for that it is better to see some examples from that it will be very clear what we are actually really interested. So, let us take uh, this associative algebra that we have seen. So, which is just m n of c. Okay. So, what we are interested in actually if you actually just uh, ask this basic question because uh, this is highly non-commutative, okay, I will leave it as exercise. So, prove that m1 of c is non-commutative if n greater than or equal to 2. Okay. So, because this associative algebra is actually non-commutative algebra over c, okay, one can ask this following question, how far it is being away from the commutative. Okay. So, then naturally what one does, so if you have seen finite group theory, in finite group theory, so you define what is called this commutator group and then you try to understand the like how big or how small this commutator group. In some sense, by computing the size of this commutator group tells you that how far that given group is stay away from being abelian group. Okay. So, similar to this, this m n of c if you are interested in understanding how far it is actually stay away from being commutative algebra. Okay. So, then we need to understand uh, the commutator structure. Okay. So, that is why what we do we actually define what is called uh, this commutator bracket and then that commutator bracket is actually going to give some extra algebraic structure on this m1 of c by understanding uh, this m1 of c with that commutator bracket whatever the structure that is going to give that algebraic structure. So, that in some sense will determine how far it is being away from commutative algebra. Okay. So, that is a basic idea. Okay. So, so, so define this commutator bracket. like bracket small a comma b to be a b minus b a. Okay. So, this is defined for all a b in m n of c and this is actually it is easy to see it is a bilinear map from m n of c cross m n of c to m n of c. There is no issue with that I will leave it as exercise. So, just check bracket that we defined using the above formula is actually a bilinear map. Over this complex number. So now, what is our actually goal? So this m1 of c, if I take this bracket, so this is actually a new product that we have defined on this m1 of c. So this is a new product is defined using the old product which is the matrix multiplication. You can see that if two matrices commute if and only if this bracket will be 0. Okay. So, somewhat it is actually closely related to two matrices being commutative or not. Okay. So, that is what this bracket of a b detects. So, in some sense if this new product defines some algebraic structure on this and then if we actually could understand what is that algebraic structure. So, then we could actually somewhat deduct m1 of c be like how far it is being away from commutative and so on. Okay. So, that is a like very like vague goal, okay. but for that we need to understand what this commutative bracket actually what kind of properties it satisfies. So, we will see there are some basic properties that this commutative bracket satisfies and then we just take those properties and then uh, we will use those properties to define our important this algebraic structure called Lie algebras. Okay. So, the very first property is this, this bracket being linear map over C. Okay. That means, you have a product on this space. 
So now what is about uh, uh, the properties the very first property okay, or the second property is that if you see the bracket of A A that should be 0 for all A in M1 of C. Okay. So, that is easy to see because A commutes with A that is all. And the third property which is actually somewhat non-trivial. So, this is called Jacobi identity. So, this is very important uh, identity. So, that this commutator actually satisfies. So, what it is it just says if you take three elements A, B, C in M and C then the how the products between them are related. So, it is a, it's a question that you ask okay. if you define a product, product actually uh, gives what happens between given two elements. So, using that then you can also ask what happens between three elements and so on. Okay. So, in associative algebra you have associativity, but here in the Lie algebra you have this Jacobi identity. So, what it says if I take bracket A, B, C and then you just cyclically permute them and then take some of these elements. Okay. So, what will happen if you cyclically permute? So, you take A, you take B and then you take C. So, you just permute like this cyclically. So, then the, the first term corresponds to A, B, C. Then the second term should correspond to B, C, A and the third term should correspond to C A B. Okay. So, that means, so then you take this what is called uh, this Lie bracket elements okay, B bracket C A plus C A B. So, this if you take these three elements corresponding to the cyclic permutation and add them together then you should get 0. So, this is what Jacobi identity says. It is actually very important exercise, uh, one should actually do it in the lifetime once at least, okay. but anyway I will do it for you, you can just verify this. It is very, very simple calculation, so let us verify for the commutator that we have defined. Okay. So, let us calculate these elements and then see what, what is happening. So, recall what is the commutator bracket A B is nothing but A B minus B A that is what we define for elements of M and, M and of C. So, then what is A bracket B C? So, how it, how you compute this? First take bracket of B C which is B C minus C B then take the bracket with A. So, then what it is? It is A times B C minus C B minus B C minus C B times C A. So, if you just do the calculation then it just gives A B C is equal to A B C minus A C B minus B C A plus C B A. Okay. So, now if you just use this first cyclic permutation then it is just you just uh, do it on the left side on the right side then what do you get? You get B C A minus B A C minus C A B plus A C B. Okay. Similarly, if you take C and then A B, so then you get C A B minus C B A minus A B C plus B A C. Okay. So, this is your the first term, this is your second term, this is your third term. So, now if you sum them 1 plus 2 plus 3. So, you can see what you get. So, let us use different colors to cancel the terms. Okay. So, if you take 
this green this ABC gets cancelled with this ABC and then this ACB gets cancelled with this ACB and this BCA gets cancelled with this BCA and this CBA gets cancelled with this CBA and then CAB gets cancelled with this and BAC cancels with this BAC. Okay? So, that means if you add them you get 0. Okay? So, this is a very important identity called Jacob identity that is satisfied by the commutator bracket that we have defined on this M n of C. Okay? So, the bracket that the commutator bracket that we have defined on this M n of C, it is not only just a bilinear form uh, sorry bilinear map from M n of C cross M n of C to M n of C. So, that also satisfy these two conditions. Okay? But let us look at this first condition that uh, this is sorry the second condition I called it L 2. This L 2 if you just closely uh, look at it. So, this is also equivalent to the following uh, condition. Okay. So, the condition L 2. So, this is bracket A A being 0 for all A in M 1 of C. So, this is if you think about it for example, if you calculate this A plus B A plus B. So, then what happens? So, this must be 0 because the, they are same elements, but if you use linearity on each coordinate then what do you get? You get this is A A plus A B plus B A plus B B, but note that A A is 0 and then B B is 0. So, you get bracket A B plus bracket B A. So, that means the condition bracket A A equal to 0 implies the bracket A B is being minus B A for all A B in M 1 of C. So, that means the condition L 2 is equivalent to this L 2 dash which says bracket A B is same as minus B A for all A B in M 1 of C. Okay. And uh, conversely from L 2 dash it is easy to go to L 2. For example, you can take B equal to A then bracket A A will be equal to minus bracket A A. So, that means 2 bracket A A will be 0 that will imply bracket A A is 0. Okay. So, that say proves this L 2 is equivalent to L 2 dash. Okay. Of course, you need this uh, field to have characteristic 0, we are working over complex numbers. So, there is no issue with this. So, because of this condition L 2 dash, we call this condition as Q symmetric okay? because when you take the product and then reverse the product, you are getting minus out. So, this condition is called Q symmetric in mathematics. Okay? So, now we are ready to define our uh, objects of interest by generalizing uh, this example. Okay. So, we define uh, these Lie algebras as as follows. Okay. So, here is the definition of Lie algebras. So, what is only what is a Lie algebra? Okay. A Lie algebra to begin with it should be a vector space. A Lie algebra. So, we always use these uh, German small letters to denote this Lie algebras. For example, I would prefer to use uh, small g in German. Okay. So, this is you read it as g, but it is German g to denote Lie algebra. So, this is a Lie algebra. So, first of all it is a vector space over complex numbers and equipped with this uh, 
product okay which we denoted by bracket which is a map from g cross g to g okay so that should satisfy some conditions what are all the conditions so those condition that we saw earlier Q symmetric and this Jacobi identity. So, let me just call that as L1 because this being product is actually natural. So, that should be a bilinear form, bilinear map from G cross G to G. So, we will, we will only call L1 as skew symmetric condition. Okay. So, either I can write XS0 for all X and G and I, I will leave it as exercise this is equivalent to the condition that we wrote for skew symmetric that is being bracket x y equal to minus y x for all x y and g. Okay. So, this is called skew symmetric. So, the second condition we call it Jacobi identity. So, that is again given 3 elements how they are related by the products of 3 elements. So, if you take product y z and then with x then take z x and then with y and then take x y and then with z. So, then the sum of these products should be equal to 0 and this should be true for all x y z in G. Okay. So, this is what we call Lie algebra and as I said earlier, so M1 of C is, is, an, is, an, uh, is a very important example and uh, we will actually see later all other examples will appear as subalgebra of that M1 of C. Okay. So, just to emphasize the Lie algebra structure on M1 of C, so what we do, we use this uh, new notation. Okay. So, we call it GLN C. What is GLN C? It is that Lie algebra M1 of C with the commutator. Lie bracket. Okay. So, this is called in literature the general linear Lie algebra okay, over C. Now, it is not hard to see if you take any associative subalgebra of M1 of C. Okay. So, let us take A being a associative subalgebra. So, then A can be made into Lie algebra using the same commutator, using the commutator bracket. Okay. So, you take same this bracket a b minus b a so that is going to give you Lie algebra structure on this associative subalgebra capital A. Okay. Again to emphasize uh, this Lie algebra structure on this capital A we denote bracket A by that Lie algebra. Okay. Again, whenever I use this bracket comma bracket, that means it is an actual commutator bracket. So, this is actual commutator bracket comes from associative algebra. For general abstract Lie algebra bracket or the Lie bracket, I use without comma like here. 
okay I will use without comma. Okay, so uh, I will stop here. We will see uh, more examples in the next uh, lecture. Okay, I will also prove some of the basic properties of uh, Lie algebras in the next lecture. Thank you.